It's Miss Renee Salem Public Library, and it's time for our online story time. Um, there is a very exciting event happening in our country uh, pretty soon here, and I just thought I would do some stories about that today. In fact, I've got a whole, a whole little activity, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, the presidential election is coming up. Now, we have elections. Most places have them twice a year. Uh, but this one, every four years, we have a really big one, and that is for the president of our country. And so this one, it's, it could be interesting. <laughs> That's all I'll say on that one. Um, but I said so my friend Octopus is here with me today because one of my stories actually features a squid, and squids have lots of tentacles, much like octopi. So he wanted to come and listen to the stories with so, I have stories about two different characters that are running for president. And I'm going to read both of them to you, and I want you guys to decide which one of these characters, Duck or Squid, do you think should be president? And I'm going to put up a poll on our Facebook so that uh, you can vote for whichever candidate you think would be the better president. Uh, so I will get to our candidates in, in just a moment. Uh, we are gonna start with a book called Vote for Our Future. And this one's just about how important it is to vote. Now, I imagine most of my audience here, you guys are probably too young to vote. You gotta be 18, but your grown-ups can vote, so we should make sure they do that. Uh, this is by Margaret McNamara and Micah Player. And this one is by Schwartz and Wade Books, is who published this one. Right. Oh, Octopus, you gotta move a little bit so our friends can see the, he's gonna, you know, sit on the President Squid. Every two years, on the Tuesday after the first Monday of November, Stanton Elementary School closes for the day. For repairs? Nope. For holiday? Nuh-uh. For vacation? No way! Stanton Elementary School closes for election day and changes from a school to a polling location. In fact, Salem Public Library is a polling location as well. So people that live in this neighborhood come right here to the library to vote. What's a polling station? A polling station is where people vote. The reason people vote is to choose who makes the laws of the country. We should all vote, said LaToya. We should all vote to make the future better. We can't vote until we turn 18, said Lizzie. So what can we do? The kids of Stanton Elementary School did their research. They looked in books and made notes. They went online and found all kinds of information. I can't wait till I can vote for real, said Amal. Me either, said everybody else. Kids have to live with adult choices. And the kids at Stanton Elementary School were ready to spread the word. Oh, they're gonna get all their family and friends to vote. Katie and her mom made flyers and handed them out. Don't forget to vote, Katie told one busy dad. I didn't even know there was an election, he said. Now you do, said Katie. Can I go with you when you vote, Jasmine asked her big sister. It's a pain to vote, her sister said. I'm not even registered, added her friend. It's not hard to register, said Jasmine. You can do it together, and I can show you how. You can register to vote Salem Public Library as well. Nadia and her auntie went door to door. Voting is a right, Nadia said. A right that women didn't have 100 years ago. Wow, it's 100 year this year. One lady told them, I don't like standing in lines. Well, nobody does. I don't like lines either, answered Nadia's auntie, but if we stand in line for coffee or for a movie or at a bank, I bet we can stand in line to vote, said Nadia. Hmm, said the lady. Maybe we can. At Jaden's house, the whole family was making their voting plans. Jaden's dad was voting before work. Jaden's mom was voting after work. I've walked to that polling station every election since I could vote, Jaden's great-grand told him. But I can't walk so far anymore. A volunteer can drive you, said Jaden. Let's get you set up, said Jaden's mom. Oh, they're going to find somebody to drive her to the polling station so she can vote. 
Mia and Noah and Jamal had a bake sale. Don't forget to vote, Mia said as she handed out change. I'll be away on election day, said one woman. In our state, you can vote early, said Mia. Or you can vote by mail, said Jamal. The voter guide tells you how. Voting, what's the big deal, asked the teenager. People fought wars so we can vote, said Mia. That's a big deal. It is a pretty big deal. Why should I vote, said a lady, said a sad lady. Nothing ever changes. Besides, one vote won't make a difference. Are you kidding, said Jamal? Changes are made every day because people voted. Every vote counts. By the time it was the first Tuesday after the first Monday of November, every kid at Stanton Elementary School had spread the word to their families, to their neighbors, to friends, to strangers, to friends of strangers. The whole town had a voting plan. And on election day, oh, this one opens really big. Oh my goodness, look at all those people that came to vote. That's amazing. Voters came early in the morning before the sun was up. They waited in line with coffee. They rolled in on wheelchairs. They voted for the first time or for the, and for the 50th time. They ran in at the last minute. They came with their sons and daughters, their nieces and nephews, their brothers and sisters, their cousins and friends. And the, on the Wednesday after the first November, or Monday of November, all the votes had been counted. The results were so close, the votes had to be counted again. Some people won and some people lost because you're always going to have that in an election. The laws of the country began to change. Stanton Elementary School went back to being a school. Oh, let's see what she's writing in her book here. Uh, for a new tomorrow, Latoya for Senate. She's going to run for the Senate. And the future began to change. So voting is very important. Everyone should vote if you're if you're old enough to. <laughs> All right, so we have to decide on which of our candidates we think should be our pre our president. Ugh. I don't know. These are both characters in picture books. I'm not sure we actually want them to be our president. All right, let's let's check out our candidates here. Okay, I may cut this video, so I'm gonna. Add Hi friends, uh, this is Miss Renee of Salem Public Library for online story time and we have a very exciting event coming up in our country and it is the presidential election. Most places have elections twice a year for smaller issues but every four years we had a big one. It's when we elect the president of our country, president of the United States. So I know most of my viewers are not old enough to vote because you got to be 18 um, but I thought I would make us a little, little election. I have two books uh, that are each about a, pres a presidential candidate. So we have Squid and we have Duck. And Octopus, well, he's got tentacles like Squid, so he wanted to come and hear the stories today too. So he's here to see about this story. Okay, so after I'm going to read these two stories to you and you decide which of these characters, Squid or Duck, you think should be our president. And I'm going to put a poll up on our Facebook page so everybody can vote and you can decide which one you think should be the president. And we'll see who, who wins our votes. So we got, we got to learn about their platforms. So are we ready? Here we go. Uh, which one should we do first? Let's do all right, we're gonna hear from President Squid first. And this one is by Aaron Reynolds and illustrated by Sarah Barron. And this one is published by Chronicle Books. Uh, President Squid, vote for Squid. Why is he, don't squids shoot ink? Why is he using a pencil? I don't know. I have realized something very important 
something that changes everything. No giant squid has ever been president before, which means I will be the first. President Squid. Now that has a nice ring to it. I will be the greatest president who ever lived. Want to know why? Well, here are five important reasons why. Reason number one, presidents wear ties. See? Tie, tie, tie. Uh, bow ties count. Wearing a tie is very presidential, and I look fabulous in a tie. Do you see any other giant squids around here wearing ties? That's what I thought. Hmm. Reason number two, the president has the biggest house ever. Have you seen the president's house? It's huge. I mean, this place is enormous. Well, have you seen my house? It's not just huge. It's not just enormous. It is absolutely Titanic. He lives in the old the sunken Titanic. Pretty cool, huh? And then he wants to move to the White House. I think it'd be a little dry there for him, wouldn't it? Reason number three, presidents are famous. Let's face it, I'm the most famous sea creature on this whole page. Do you know that guy? Of course not, he's a nobody. How about that fish over there? You never heard of him, right? How about me? Do you know who I am? President Squid, you say? Exactly! I even have a book named after me. You're reading it right now. He does have a book named after him. See? Famous. Reason number four. Presidents get to do all the talking. I'm great at doing all the talking. I'm doing all the talking right now. I'm doing all the talking about five reasons why I should be president. And why presidents talk, everyone has to listen. Are you listening? I said, everyone has to listen. He's kind of bossy. And finally, reason number five. The president is the big boss. Bossing people around may be the most presidential thing a president does. And I'm perfect at being the big boss. After all, there's nobody bigger than me. See? There's nobody bossier than me. Hey, shark, brush your teeth. Hey, jellyfish, comb your tentacles. You look terrible. See? Very bossy. I'll be in charge of everybody. Think I'm ready for all that power. I don't know. Let's go over this once more for those of you who are a little slow. Where's the tie? Check. Huge house. Check. Famous. Check. Does all the talking. Check, checkity, check, check. Big and bossy. Check and check. I'm perfect for this job. All hail President Squid. I said all hail President Squid. There's no hailing going on. What's the problem, people? Why aren't you hailing President Squid? You, Sardine, why aren't you hailing me? I would, but I'm stuck in this clam. Hmm, does that clam know that I'm wearing a tie? He, he doesn't seem to care about your choice of neckwear, sir. Oh, hmm. well, that squid doesn't want to hear that. How strange. Does the clam know how big my house is? He seems unimpressed. Do you know who I am, clam? Do you know, realize how famous I am? He says he's never heard of you, sir. You have got to be kidding me. Clam, this is President Squid. I do all the talking, yes sir, re Bob. When I talk, everybody has to listen. Presidents talk, clams listen. That's my motto. I say swim, you say how fast. I say back off from the sardine, you back off, bub. And I say, and I say unhand him. This very instant. Clams don't have ears. Oh, <laughs> so he didn't, he didn't hear anything President Squid said. Stand back, little sardine. I'm coming. I'll help you. Oh, let's try to wiggle the sardine right out of the clamshell. You. I just jumped in there and helped you. Helping people. Helping people. That's very presidential. It is? 
It is. Hmm. Being president's more work than I thought. Oh, he didn't know you had to work. He thought it could just be bossy. All hail President Squid! All hail President Squid! Wait! I have really something very important. Being president is exhausting. I do not want to be president. I want to be King Squid, all powerful ruler of the entire universe. All of the power, none of the work. Now that has a nice ring to it. And that's the end. I don't know. What do you guys think? Squid? Uh, Octopus likes him because, you know, he's got tentacles and stuff, but uh, I'm not sure he's our best candidate, but let, you know what? Let's hear from Duck and see, see what Duck thinks. So this is Duck for President by Doreen Cronin and Betsy Lewin. Now, we've come across this duck before, I believe. This one was published by Simon & Schuster. Now, this duck... He's kind of known to be a troublemaker. So let's let's see how, how he's going to fare as a presidential candidate. Oh, uh, the plane's pulling a little sign that says vote. <sighs> Running a farm is very hard work. At the end of each day, Farmer Brown is covered from head to toe in hay, horsehair, seeds, sprouts, feathers, filth, mud, muck, and coffee stains. And he doesn't smell very good either. Oh. The animals have chores to do too. Pigs clean under the beds, cows weed the garden, sheep sweep the barn, duck take out the trash, mow the lawn, grind coffee beans. That doesn't sound like too bad. So at the end of each day, the pigs are covered in lint bunnies, the cows are covered in weeds, the sheep are covered in dust, and duck is covered in tiny bits of grass and espresso beans. Duck did not like to do chores. He did not like picking up tiny bits of grass and espresso beans out of his feathers. Why is Farmer Brown in charge anyway, thought Duck. What we need is an election. He made a sign and hung it up in the barn. Farmer Brown must go. Farm election tomorrow. The next morning, Farmer Brown found a poster on his door. Vote Duck for a kinder, gentler farm. Farmer Brown. Furious. He ran to the barn and found the animals registering to vote. Voter registration. Voters must live on the farm, show valid ID. Oh, it did say be at least this tall, but now Duck's crossing that part out. The mice got together and protested the height requirement. So Duck crossed it off. Well, yeah, the mice were little. They're short. On election day, each of the animals filled out a ballot and placed it in a box. The vote was counted and the results were posted on the barn wall. Farmer Brown, six, duck, 20. Duck won. Farmer Brown demanded a recount. One sticky ballot was found stuck to the bottom of a pig. Oop. And the new tally was Farmer Brown, six, duck, 21. The voters had spoken. Duck was officially in charge. Running a farm is very hard work. At the end of each day, Duck was covered from head to toe in hay, horsehair, seeds, sprouts, feathers, filth, mud, muck, and coffee stains. <sighs> Running a farm is no fun at all, thought Duck. That night, Duck and his staff started working on Duck's campaign for governor. Oh. <laughs> all right, so he's done running the farm. He's going to go be governor now. Vote for me. I'm a duck, not a politician. Duck left Farmer Brown in charge and hit the campaign trail. He visited small town diners. He marched in parades. He went to town meetings. He gave speeches that only other ducks could understand. Well, at least he's like out there doing things. On election day, the voters filled out their ballots and booths all over the state. The vote was counted and the results were posted in the local paper. Duck wins by a nose. 
Oh, Ms. Governor. Oh, she got 299,999 votes. A duck got 300,000. One vote he gave her. The governor demanded a recount. Two sticky ballots were found stuck to the bottom of a plate of pancakes. And the new tally was Ms. Governor, 299,999. Duck, 300,000. The voters had spoken. Duck was officially in charge. Running a state is really hard work. At the end of each day, Duck was covered from head to toe in hairspray, ink stains, scotch tape, fingerprints, mayonnaise, and coffee stains. He had a really bad headache. <sighs> Running a state is no fun at all. Thought Duck. That night, Duck and his staff started working on posters for the presidential election. Oh, now he's gonna run for president. Duck for a change, I like Duck. Duck, making us proud again. Duck left his staff in charge and hit the campaign trail. He kissed babies in local diners. He rode in parades. He gave speeches that only other ducks could understand. He even played the saxophone on late night television. You know, Duck played saxophone. On election day, the voters filled out their ballots in booths all over the country. The vote was counted and the results were announced on CNN. There's the decision, Mr. President. Uh, 50,456,165 votes. And Duck got 50 million. 446,170 votes. He beat him by five. The president demanded a recount. 10 sticky ballots were found stuck to the bottom of the vice president. Oh, <laughs> and the new tally was, Mr. President, 50,456,165. Duck, 50,546,100. 80. So now I won by 15. The voters had spoken. The duck was officially in charge. <sighs> Running a country is really hard work. At the end of each day, duck was covered from head to toe in face powder, paper cuts, staples, security bags, security service agents, and coffee stains. And he had a really bad headache. Running a country is no fun at all, thought Duck. Then he checked the help wanted ads. Duck needed no experience necessary, must be able to mow the lawn and grind coffee beans. Duck left the vice president in charge and headed back to the farm. At the end of each day, Farmer Brown is now covered from head to toe in hay, horsehair, seeds, sprouts, feathers, filth, mud, muck, and coffee stains. And Duck is working on his autobiography. He's not even doing his work at home. Oh, Duck. Oh, man, guys. I don't, I don't know. President Squid. He likes to talk a lot more ties. Duck. Duck seems to want to just have fun. He doesn't really want to do any work. Oh, Squid doesn't really want to do any work either. I don't know if we've got the best candidates here. Maybe, maybe we should just vote for Octopus. I don't, I don't know. I'm gonna put up a poll so you guys decide who do you think should be president, Duck or Squid? Vote and I will let you know who has won. All right, so our stories were kind of long today, so I appreciate you sticking in there with me uh, and voting. And I will see you guys next time. Stay safe. I love you guys. I miss you.